Ladies, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am so delighted to be here with Dr. Deb. She has blessed us with coming in tonight and talking to us. And I just want to say welcome to all of you that are watching live. Thank you so much for joining us today here on the Zoom. And if you would, uh, just say hello in the chat. Uh, let us know how you're doing. And all of you who are listening on podcast, thank you so much for joining us. We just we just bless you. I know that it's hard sometimes to make all the calls that you want to make, but hey, it's it's so it's so valuable that you can listen to this later and be here and you don't have to miss anything. So Dr. Deb, thank you so much for being here with us and and thank you for blessing us with this. This is just such a timely word. You're going to be talking a little bit tonight about the mystery of the key of David and I am in, I'm in, I'm so excited because this is light in the darkness and um, that is just such a uh, perfect way for us to be entering the season that we're in. Right. right now but before we get there let's talk about something that's coming up real quick yeah you have the um journey conference coming up the women of merit ministries.com women of merit ministries.com you can go on there ladies and get registered for this event it is in it's a physical event <laughs> i know we're not used to that right, right. <laughs> everything being virtual um yeah you have yes you have to wear clothes on this yeah. <laughs> you, have to wear, you have to wear clothes. Um, it is on November 12th, 13th, and 14th in Oklahoma City. Right. And you still have openings available. There's still um, room for registration. So ladies, get registered quickly. It's in Oklahoma City. You can fly in. It's close to an airport. The, um, the information is at Women of Merit, M-E-R-I-T, Ministries dot com go on there and if you will click on that link then you'll save 50 percent on your hotel room and the cost of the registration ladies covers all of your meals for the weekend so that's phenomenal friday saturday sunday it's you've got your meals covered so the cost of the conference is is negligible um and the hotel rooms almost i think it's right about 50 percent off isn't it dr deb yeah yeah your discount is, so yeah make sure that you register through Women of Merit Ministries, and then that way you can get the um, the hotel room at half price, and you can right. get a you know you can get a room where you can share, or you can get a room on your own. You can get the rooms that have the the individual um, bathroom that you share, but you have separate bedrooms. So there's you know there's lots of options there, but this um, Dr. Deb, this uh, conference, uh, and I want you to come because I'm going to be there. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> but um dr deb this 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 uh conference is going to be about healing and and worship and tell us a little bit about what's on your heart um uh, regarding this this conference well for many years you know i i come from the field of psychology and theology but one thing in my psychology practice that i've seen for years and years and years and especially in the body of messiah is that women will go and keep they will go for years keeping their mouth shut trying to be perfect trying to look perfect and trying to play a role instead of being genuinely who they are. And we want to create an atmosphere there where you can just be who you are, whatever issues you've been dealing with. It's a place that you can feel safe. And I mean, that the worship is going to be, trust me on this, outstanding. Yeah. And we've got a couple of ladies that do interpretive dance with the flags that will have you in tears, you know, mm -hmm. just from that dance you know that they do and then we've got some dramas and then some really powerful speakers like our yeah. friend right here brenda <laughs> and charlie's going to be there and we've got some really great uh you're going to be speakers. speaking you're going to be keynote speaker and charlie i guess Car charlie's going to be keynote speaker and um wow it's going to be amazing i it, mean it is going yeah. to be amazing and i feel like you're going to be releasing we, something over the ladies yes uh, it, Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It seems like there's always when you get women together mm -hmm. and they really feel safe and they just want to worship and they they see women up there that are talking about things like hidden abortions and how they've dealt with that. 
most people don't realize that in every congregation, if you go to a, a, a church or a synagogue or, a co you know, co fellowship or congregation, you look down the row and you see four women, the statistics are one in four women has had an abortion, even in the congregations. And, but the thing is, they've never felt, they felt condemned. Right. And shamed. They can't and talk about it and they can't talk about it so how do you how do you heal you know whatever's kept in darkness will only grow and you know it's the light of messiah it's the light of his spirit that brings healing and so we want to provide that atmosphere because it, it's actually in norman oklahoma which is just a okay. suburb it's a suburb okay actually of Oklahoma City so you know I think that we're like you know not that not that far like 20 miles from the airport or something it's real fast and easy access mm -hmm. but we I we've been having this saying with some of the women what happens in Norman stays in Norman <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah and so we plan on having um just at the end of each featured speaker uh, an altar call where women can get anointed. Um, and, and normally these conferences that I've been to and been involved with, there is a spirit of prophecy that normally falls. You know, I'm not telling the Ruach what to do and not, you know, not telling you this is going to happen. We don't know everything that's going to happen, but I do know uh, just from the women I talked to that women are hungry for this and there's a lot of times i don't know if you're aware of it or not but i don't care what kind of congregation you belong to um there's abusive situations that are also swept under the rug and people are hiding and they don't want to talk about it they don't want to say you know well i'm in this abusive situation i don't know what to do because a lot of times as you may know women have been um sidelined you know, well, you're not, obviously you're not in submission or, you know, right. you're not doing this right or that. So what happens is there's a lot of times that women live in, in fear and, uh, you know, a, I can't even count. I, I would say 90% of my clients have suffered through things like uh, molestation and rape, you know, it, it, there's, there's nothing, everyone has a story. Yeah. And the problem is, is when we go to congregations, we look at that woman over there. I look at Brenda and I think, wow, she has got it going on. She is all put together. You know, <laughs> what kind of problems? She, oh, if she knew who right. I was or if she knew the problems I've dealt with or what I've been through, then, right. oh my gosh, you know. I had a lady as a worship leader sit beside me on the platform a couple of weeks ago. And she said, you know, I, I, I've been through three marriages, you know, I've had two previous marriages and, you know, one of the, the men in that marriage ended, turned out it was gay and had left her for another man. And she had another marriage was really abusive. And, and she goes, but not many women have, you know, I know in my circles, she said, have been married three times. And she was feeling all this condemnation and guilt. And I said, well, sister, you're sitting on the platform with a woman right now that has on my third marriage. You know, one of my husbands died, one um, left me and was with another woman and, you know, on and on and on and on. So, you know, it, it, you cannot judge by outward appearance. No, you cannot. You know? Some of us have learned to heal and some of us have been really good at just disguising some of the, the hurt and the pain, you know, and stuffing it and never feeling really free from it. And so that's my vision for the conference. It's going to be about uh, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing, and just, just freedom. It's his anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage. And it's his anointing that will set the captive free. And it's gonna be about freedom and liberty and shouting and worshiping and falling on our faces and laughing until we cry. And, you know, because some situations, even sometimes tragic are hilarious. 
yeah. You know, so, and I've heard some of these stories and you're going to go, what? Okay. You know, and they happen. Some of the things I've gotten myself into are hysterical. Right. Right. <laughs> and and people, because but, we're people, we're yeah. people and things yeah. like this happens to people. And it's not just to people that, you know, well, you, you made those choices. So you deserve right. for it to happen. Not all of it was by choice. Have I, am I guilty of a lot of poor choices? And oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hands, both feet over here. Yeah. Right. But not everything tragic or right. hard or difficult that I've ever been through in my life was my choice. You know, right. sometimes, you know, life happens, things happen. You know, we've got women that are going to be there testifying about having, um, miscarriages and what that's like and how it feels and what when that how they feel when they see other women you know that are ha popping out babies left and right and their and their husband have been trying for 10 years and mm -hmm. and nothing you know so there's you know it's just it's going to be raw and real I think is what I used to describe it raw and real and so if if it's possible and you can make it um be there because I think it'll be it'll be well worth anyone's time to be there. And, and I'm super those excited. Of you, those of you that just came on November 12th, 13th, 14th, and um, uh, you'll be flying into Oklahoma City. It's in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, the conference is called The Journey. Oh my gosh, just saying that, Dr. Dub, just saying that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, The Journey. So you'll be registering at women of merit ministries.com, right. correct? And right. you can get your discount uh, hotel room, I mean, massive discount. <laughs> Please right. do that. Get the massive discount. And then um, your registration that you'll be paying when you register for the conference is also going to cover your meals. So it's basically nominal. Yeah. Uh, three yeah. days worth of meals. Come on. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I know. I know. And so it's it's in November, mm -hmm. the 12th, 13th, and 14th. I see somebody's asking, but okay. she thought it was in October. No, it's November. The yeah, the 12th, 13th, and 14th. Right. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it'll yeah. Start so Friday registration will be from three to five, and then we'll break for we're gonna have dinner. And then at the the main session will start at seven on Friday. So for those that are flying in, we've got people driving from Amarillo and Dallas, Fort Worth area, and from, well. Carpool, ladies, carpool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you don't have to fly, you can drive, you know. You can totally but, drive. I'm yeah. flying, but <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be coming from Austin. My husband's gonna go to, um, I'm taking my husband to Austin and he's gonna stay with my sons. And, um, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to fly out of Austin, fly to Oklahoma city. And then that way I can have a little bit of, you know, quiet. <laughs> can I say that out loud? <laughs> quiet time. <laughs> You'll probably have to lock yourself in your room, but yeah, it'll be quiet time. You know, we're, we're, we're planning on some quiet time and for people yeah. to have a little bit of women to have a little bit of time to reflect. But if right. I know, if I know most of us will, we'll be knocking on everybody's door, you know. <laughs> pajama party. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, we'll bring decent pajamas. Yeah. Decent pajamas and, you know, it's going to be, I was thinking, I was thinking yesterday, when was the last time that I actually spoke in front of real people? <laughs> not that you're not real, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because, um, yeah, it's been a couple of years that we have been, you know, um, not gathering at groups like this. So yeah, oh, um, I know. And I've had so many women now ask me, "Oh, it's going to be in person? It's going to be live? It's not a Zoom?" And I'm like, "No, it's in person. It's not going." Like, oh, yes, you know, because they're hungry for fellowship. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Absolutely, I'm very, very excited. So, ladies, come and join us. We're going to have so much fun. If you don't, you're going to wish you were there. <laughs> so Dr. Deb, I'm going to, um, you know, I thank you so much for sharing that with me. It's really stirred my heart. It has really stirred my heart. And now I understand why I was telling you before we started today, I had my, I had my plan out of everything I was going to be speaking on. La, 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 la. I had my scriptures and all that stuff. Oh, I'm ahead of, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Yom Kippur busted that right out the door. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I was just in a state of repentance. And then I'm like, oh, oh, father, thank you. Now, after talking with you, now I completely understand why. And thank God, right. because I, I can see now that the direction is going to be a little bit different. And I'm, I'm very excited about what he's going to be doing. Well, yeah. it's interesting that we, we, we prayed about it. And the reason we, we chose to name the conference The Journey is because all of us are in different places in our walk. Not, we're not, and we try to hold everybody to the same standard. And you don't do it like, <laughs> I'm at, like I am because I'm here and you're there. No, yeah. it's all about the journey and how he leads us and guides us and directs us and heals us through the journey. Yes. And so that's important. Wow. You know, Dr. Deb, I, I so firmly believe that. Okay. I didn't wear waterproof mascara, so this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I so firmly believe about us being in the journey because what the Lord is always reminding me of is when I feel like I'm not somehow measuring up to whatever you know, right. Shabbat or prep day or, <laughs> or, right. you know, Feast of Trumpets or Sukkot or Rosh Kadesh, you know, I mean, it's right. like, talk about feeling like, you know, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed and feel like you, you know, you never measure up. And that's another thing that women feel shame about is that right. somehow they're not measuring up. And you know what the Holy One says in his word and how he just keeps reminding us to go back to it. Put your foot on the path put your foot on the path, put your foot on the path because right. it is, it is actually engaging in putting your foot on the path of that, turning your intention toward him. That is everything. It's not about the execution as much as it is about the intention of turning your heart toward him and saying, I'm not really sure. Maybe you know, or some of you know how to do these things really well, and that's great. So keep doing it so that the rest of us can follow. You know, that's awesome. Right. But most of us are in the place where we're saying, man, I just don't feel like I measure up when I'm doing these things. I don't think that my my suka was good enough, or I don't think that my, you know, whatever, I didn't blow the shofar, or you know, my husband didn't come out and hang with me in the in the sukkot uh, or in the suka. So, you know, this is all. It's the beauty of the journey of putting your foot on the path right. because he told us to return to the path. He didn't say, uh, and by the way, you know, this is the list of how it's going to be. He didn't do that. He right. said, be right. there, show right. up. Right. Well, and I think the perfect example of that is Yeshua himself. He did not, when he addressed the people, mm -hmm. he didn't say, okay, are you celebrating Yom Kippur on the right day or not? Yeah, right. Because if you're not, you're in trouble, you know, right. or are you, are you the full moon? You don't know about Rosh, you know, you don't do these things correctly. What, what's wrong with you people? No, it was, he, no. he said the ones that were going to be judged were those who didn't treat you the way you should be treated or me the way I should be treated. That's he right. said, I was naked and you came and visited me yeah. and I was, you know, without food and you fed me and I, you know, you brought me clothes when I was naked. You brought me food when I was hungry. You, you ministered to my needs yeah. when I thirsted, you brought refreshment and water. You, you ministered to my needs yeah. and we lose sight of that sometimes in yeah. our wanting to have a formula. Yeah, because we're human and it's really easy if I know A, B, C, D, yeah. okay, then I can do that and get this formula down. But right. when it comes to relationship and re the, the vertical and then the horizontal relationship is what he said were the most important commandments of all. That's right. Exactly. And so that's what we have to learn to get right. The other thing is just gravy on top of the cake. Right. It's the you abundance know. of the living. Right. Know? Those are the yeah. abundance of the livings. But the thing, yeah. the thing is that we can't have abundant living if we don't have life. Right. Right. And I just realized I said gravy on top of the cake instead of icing. That sounds really gross, actually. <laughs> but I meant icing. You're a gravy lover. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, not really. <laughs> and I'm a cake lover too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I promise you, I do not put gravy on my cakes. Okay. <laughs> it may be Oklahoma, but I have not looked <laughs> into that culture yet. So. <laughs> That's good. That's great. Uh, Dr. Deb, you know, you were talking to me earlier about um, about what what the Lord's been speaking to you this week, and I know that it all is all kind of coming. It really is like a full circle. It's really coming together. But you were talking about the mysteries of the key of David. And you were saying that this is how to walk out, how to walk in the darkness, how to walk as light. And this is really, this, this is truly, I mean, this goes right along with what we're saying. Because if we're not giving a cup of water to somebody who's thirsty, I mean, really, come on, this is what this is living the life, right? This is, this is life itself. Right. How, and so how, sis, how, how are you, what is the Lord saying to you right now about being lights in the dark, in this present darkness? I, I think of, you know, the circumstances of, um, of the nations, it's not the U S it's, it's everywhere. Right. It's, it's right. everywhere. Right. Um, in these circumstances, it is really easy for people to be fearful. Um, I, you know, I had a phone call recently and they were uh, on the phone call. They were saying they were checking off all of the people that were going to be affected in the next, you know, couple of months. <laughs> and right. they didn't realize that everything that they were checking off was what was, you know, is affecting my husband and I <laughs> I'm like, oh, right. oh, oh, oh. You know, like bullets hitting me, you know? Right. And as I was, as I was, hearing my and seeing and feeling my flesh rise up in fear I just took a breath and I'm like you know father um this is life life is a journey with you this is this is life and it's and there are hard things and there are good things yeah. but we have to stay focused we cannot let our eyes begin deciding how we walk this path because it's not by sight that we're doing this. No. So, so and, you're talking and, about and what we're and what we're not to, and what you're speaking to brings us out yeah. fully, is we're not to be fear leaders. We we're supposed to be cheerleaders. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Jesus said, "Be of good cheer, because I've overcome the world." See, the, the command, thing, by the way, it too. is a command, yeah. and <laughs> and and I know because I I you know, I I have been guilty of cursing the darkness and that's why this has been so in my heart because oh. the lord kind of chastised me you know where you're saying this is wrong and that is wrong and you kind of go around pointing that this is bad and that like the checklist you're talking about yeah. Yeah. and so what you end up doing is you're just cursing the darkness but we're to focus on being the light to the world because like it says in isaiah gross darkness will cover the earth but arise and shine for your light has come and when you were speaking, you know, one of those books I remember from the 80s was Peretti. He wrote this book called Piercing the Darkness and, yes. you know, and in this present darkness, in this yes. present darkness and yes. those books. And I'm, I look at those now and I'm thinking, well, I thought it was dark then. It wasn't even dark yet. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't even dusk. <laughs> And we're, we're thinking it's dark now, but it probably isn't even dark yet, you know? So a lot of what happens to us in all of this is, is fine tuning us for the tribulation, for the things that may be coming upon the earth. I'm not saying they're coming upon this year, next year. I don't know. No, you know, I'm not pointing to that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but it all, you know, is tuning us. Do you really think David would have been able to slew, slew, uh, he slew Goliath, um, but he had to kill the bear first or the lion, you know, it, I mean, he had to do all of those things to bring him to the point. And then he had to have Saul chasing after him, trying to kill him so that he would be a righteous king for the people because he understood what persecution was he understood we look at the first century and it is an amazing testimony to what they endured they lived in tyranny yeah. you know it may be getting bad here in the united states and and i heard someone's listening here from australia it may be getting bad in a lot of nations all over the world right now 
but I don't know of anywhere at this moment, um, I could be wrong about this, but that is lighting their streets with crucified Christians and, and lighting them as torches for night lights. You know, um, no, we haven't seen that yet. And hopefully we don't see that, but I'm just saying, you know, what we curse is the darkness it is futile. It only makes things worse and darker in our own spirits and in our own souls. We are called to be children of the light. And I, I want to read from, and, and this is what the key, one of the, it'll give us insight to, there's only two places in all of scripture that the key of David is mentioned, but I think it's, it's important for us to know and understand those two scriptures. Revelation 3, 7, I've got to put on my my glass, my vanity glasses here. I just need them to see. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, two places in all of scripture. And one I'm going to read from is Revelation 3, 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. He says, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. You, for you have a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Or basically I put in parentheses here, have not denied my authority. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to persevere. I want to say that again. You have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. So he's, he's speaking now to the congregations that are being persecuted and they're living under total tyranny. And he's telling them that because you persevere, and what did Yeshua said? That he that endures to the end will be saved. And so our job is to, number one, persevere in doing what's right in, sp in spite of everything that's going on around us. And in number two, we are to endure. And and realize and understand that he has put us on this planet for such a time as this. So whether we have confidence in ourselves or not, oh God, if this happens, I don't know if I can handle that. If this goes on, I don't know if I can endure that. You know, um, he, he has a great deal of confidence and faith in us for this generation and for this time, or we wouldn't be here right now. Yeah, we were so, born for this. We That's were born for, we this. born for this. And so these are testings to sharpen us, to cause us to rely upon him even more. In Isaiah 22, 22, that's the other place that it's mentioned, uh, the key of David. The key of the house of David, I will lay on his shoulder. So he shall open and no one shall shut. And he shall shut and no one will open. So David, we'll go into this a little bit so, to kind of show what it is. David served as king in Hebron from the tribe of Judah for seven years. And then all the tribes came together to make him king over the entire land. His uh, coronation as king, if you want to look it up, and I'm not going to read it right now, is in 2 Samuel 5, 1 through 5. But he brought unity to the entire land. Mm. That is the key of David. 
that is bringing unity with our brothers. You know, that's what I love about the Rooted Cafe and the portions. You guys are bringing unity to the brotherhood. You're not condemning because you know people are at different places on their journey. You're not saying, oh, you're not doing this right, or you should have done it this way, or you should have done it that way. Because at the end of it all, I mean, let's get real. Yeah. Yeshua is coming back to correct all of us. All of us. He's going to fix all, all of <laughs> us. And when we say we're Torah, a Torah pursuant, it means just that we're pursuant, Pursuing. but it doesn't mean we've got it down because we do not. In the first century, they had studied the Torah for, for centuries and centuries and centuries. Do you think they would have known how to do it right? You would have thought. You would have thought. Would have thought yeah. Yeah. But no. But they're people. <laughs> they're people. <laughs> and Yeshua said, you guys are doing it all wrong. So I have no doubt that when he yeah. comes and returns, we're all going to be doing it all wrong. Yeah. But it's okay because... Yeah. Like you said, I love, I love that terminology. You put your feet on the path. Yes. And the path is leading to the one who holds the key of David, Amen. the key yeah. to unity, the key to brotherhood, the key to new life. And that's the path we have to be on too. We're not saying that we're, we're little Davids or we're little Yeshua's, but we are their representatives. Yeah, we're and, ambassadors. Isn't that really part of what our what our call, our ministry is? It is. We're and the thing, and the thing, like, let's you know break that down a little bit. If you're an ambassador to the United States of America, then when you go to uh, Germany, you don't give your own opinion or what you think needs to be done. You are telling what your president or whoever's in charge told you to tell them you share that word not your own right. not your own opinion or what you think is right in your own eyes that's not what an ambassador does as his ambassadors were to share his word what he speak what he taught and you know the interesting thing is is yeshua what a kingdom is it actually means a dominion of the king so when you read his parables, he knows more about the kingdom than anybody because he's the king and it's his dominion. He, this is all his dominion that we're part of. So when you look at it that way, who knows more about the kingdom than him? And he didn't go in there and start preaching doctrine. Right. Look at his messages. It was all about being the faithful servant. It was all about doing right by others. It was all, you know, I mean, just read, go through the parables and you will see that it, to him, it was about the vertical relationship and the horizontal relationship. And that has to be our focus. You know, we were given a co-mission, okay? The great commission, everybody's heard of that, right? Well, what that really, what a commission is, is a co-mission. It means you have a partner in this mission. Well, what is the mission? He said that the good news would be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all nations, and then the end would come. Well, our co-mission with him is to share what his word says and to make disciples and to be on a mission with him. He didn't say that our mission was to be his good and faithful students. <laughs> well, and don't get me wrong, I study all the time and it's important. But we get <laughs> things out of kilter sometimes, you know, we think it's, that's the mission and it's not the mission. He gave us a mission. Every good, and you know this, you guys have a, a wonderful organization um, with Rudy Cafe and, and you know, you have to have a mission statement or you yeah. don't know where you're going. He evidently thought we needed one too <laughs> because he said, this is your commission. This is a great commission that I want you to do. And you take it from here and go out there. He said, go there for, he didn't say sit there for and wait for me to do everything. And then I'll show up one day and I'll have done it all for you. And that's kind of the lazy person in me wants to do that. 
I mean, if we get, you know, let's get real, you know. Oh, I can't wait for Jesus to come. I can't wait for Yeshua to put his feet on the Mount of Olives. And all of us say that. And of course, all of us are looking forward to that day. But you can't look so forward to that day that you forget the mission. Right. Is to be light and to spread the light in a dark world. I mean, if you look at, uh, it, at let's look at the city of Jerusalem. David's first act as king was recorded that David attacked the stronghold of Zion. Why? Because God had revealed to him, probably through Samuel, that he would be king of Israel someday and that the stronghold of Zion would be his capital, his White House, if, if you will. Zion was appointed by God to be the governmental seat of David's kingdom, and he knew that. And Here's the thing. Um, I want to get into a little bit of Joab here, because when David attacked Zion, when Joab ascended into, into Zion, the water shaft, he went over to the gate of the fortress, and in order to open it from the inside, he had to go into the water shaft to do that and open. And once the gate was open, the entire Israelite army would be able to enter the fortress and subdue the stronghold of Zion. But the thing I got about this, which I got really excited about, was it was an inside job. Oh. Oh. It's an inside job. Those rivers of living water that flow out from us, it's an inside job. Somebody has to go in with the key to unlock that. And it's only the Ruach HaKodesh that can do that in us. And there will be rivers of, of water flowing from, and it's not for us. You know, this is what we, I mean, when we understand the Davidic kingdom and that it was really an inside job, you went on the inside first, and got things straight on the inside and then it spread outwardly and brought unity. And we have to get it right inside of us first too, to be able to be salt and light. So it's good to spend time like we've spent during this last holy season, you know, in introspection. You know, just because you spent all of that time, Brenda, in all of the introspection, you said, you know, all my plans for what I was going to speak at the conference went out the window. No, I don't think they went out the window at all. I think you were doing the inside job. Mm -hmm. And those rivers of living water are going to flow out of you. And we're all going to be swimming in it, you know, doing oh. the dog paddle, just <laughs> up in, in the presence and the healing power of mm -hmm. God, because that's what he wants. You know, it was about spirit and truth. That's what he said. You know, you, you don't, he, he even, he told the woman at the well, you don't even know who you worship, where you worship, you know, but there's coming a time. And I believe it's now. It, it was then for them, but I think it's now for us. Mm -hmm. We serve a now God. We don't serve a God of yesterday or the future. Right. He's, he moves in us right now. Yes. And we've got to, you know, I think sometimes what we do is we're so busy looking back there of what I did wrong or looking up ahead of what could be and what might be that we forget that the real living and the real commission is now. It's today. Mm. And we have to walk in that. Um, that's what kingdom authority is. And I like what, what Messiah himself said in Luke 10, 18. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. That's Luke 10, 18. Behold, I give you. Who was he speaking to? Mm -hmm. His disciples, his people. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any mean, 
he means hurt you. And he goes on to say, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And, you know, if we look at what the priestly duties were, mm -hmm. they, they were to be in Exodus, it tells us in the 19th chapter, that there, they would be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Mm -hmm. That's what we're to be, a kingdom of priests. Well, what were the priestly duties? Well, in John 8, it kind of alludes to it. Um, Yeshua said in, in chapter 8, verse 12, then Yeshua spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. There it is. The life. And you were saying, putting your foot on the path. That's exactly what he's saying here. That if you put your foot on the path, that you won't be walking in darkness and you will have the light of life because he is the light of the world. Matthew 5, I'm just on this light kick right now because I wanted to get that. And in Matthew 5, he says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. And that's what he's asking us to do. Be the light that helps others to see. Our priestly duties, and the duties of the priests have never changed. Mm -mm. The priestly duties are to keep the altar burning and to light the menorah. So it's interesting because Aaron um, was to put the purest oil in the lamps every day. And the wicks were bent so that the six outer lamps faced toward the Shema. The yes. handle, the yes. servant handle. So what does that mean? It means all eyes focused on him. All eyes focused on him. Yes. And that's the key. If we're to keep our focus, if we want to be his light, mm -hmm. keep our eyes focused on him. That's his promise. We are supposed to be fanning the flames of that altar. Yeah. It's on our heart now. And we have to keep fanning the flames. You know that fire? I don't know about you. Anybody out there ever been dry? <laughs> I have. That fire does not stay lit by itself. Mm -mm. No. We have, to we have to fan each other's flames. We do. Yeah. We Just do. like what the priest did. What did they do? They, they removed the ashes to keep the fire flamed. They had to remove the ashes so that it wouldn't snuff the fire. So they right. removed the ashes, right? From right. the previous sacrifices while the flame was still. So if you think about that, Dr. Deb, that's exactly what we're called to do. We're called to ignite. The flame is already there. The flame's already ignited. It ignites not the right word, but the flame is already ignited. However, as a as a priest, a royal priesthood, what is that? A mamlechet kohanim? Right. We're supposed to be fanning the flames of those around us to keep the fire bright and to keep our keep us not being the focus, uh, focus of attention. Right. 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 But to keep him being the focus of attention. So all eyes, I love that you said that, all eyes on him. Yes. And the eyes are the light of the soul. The light has to be kept on him so that the light's reflecting him, not reflecting each other. And the servant candle never goes out. Never. It never went out. And they didn't have to fill the oil in the servant candle. That was a miracle that happened. I was reading, let me look over here. I put some stuff up on my computer. Okay, according to the Talmud, while all the lamps received the same amount of oil, the central lamp never ran out. The miracle also occurred during the temple period, though it ended abruptly about 40 years before the destruction of the temple. Hmm, wonder what else happened then. Oh. 
<laughs> after the true servant branch. So the Talmud testifies to the fact that when Yeshua came, the branch, the servant candle was then had returned to the heavenly throne. He was there. And so all eyes now are focused on him. Wow. Because we're that living menorah that he came to light. And it, it, it's, I mean, it's such a beautiful thing that it's hard to, um, for us to even comprehend all of the pictures in scripture. I want to show you this because I want you to be this. I want to show you that. You know, when my kids were teenagers, I used to get upset with them sometimes because they wouldn't do what I had asked them to do. And I remember saying to my son one time, what do I have to do, draw you a picture? <laughs> I, I look at these scriptures and these examples and it's like, oh yeah, the father drew me a picture and he drew me a picture and he drew me a picture. And he drew me a picture. <laughs> I guess we need it. <laughs> and those people that had studied this for how many thousands of years still didn't get it when he's telling them these pictures, you know, yeah. and they're like, huh? You know, because we're all... Well, I used to use this term with my kids a little bit. Don't be a knucklehead. <laughs> I heard that one from my father, so I passed it on. And because uh, I was a knucklehead and still am sometimes. But, you know, and, and also it, the Talmud did record that the crimson cord uh, would turn white at, when at Yom Kippur if the nation's sins were forgiving, forgiven. And after Yeshua came, it never happened again. They marveled at why it didn't happen. And it was like, okay, don't, you don't get this picture? Wow. Yeah. So it's not like the Lord hasn't tried from every angle. <laughs> let me, let, how about this illustration? Well, how about this one? How about let this? Let me show you another picture. <laughs> yeah, let me show you another picture. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, pretty much. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful now because I really believe that he has began to, to write um, his covenant on the altar of our hearts. Like it says in Jeremiah 31, he's starting to write it there. And, but we are supposed to reflect the light of that altar in our heart. We are supposed to reflect the light of Messiah so we, I mean, we have this great commission to the body of Messiah and to the world, you know, we're to keep each other's light shining and we're to keep the light shining in the world. So why do we curse the darkness? It's the greatest opportunity for people to see him yeah. and his light. And I don't know anybody, I don't know about you, when you go to like a doctor or to the grocery store, I don't know anybody that's not asking questions now and going, what the heck's going on? You know, something's not right. Something's, you know, what, did, what meaneth this? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's an opportunity, if we will take advantage of the opportunity to share the good news of the kingdom of God. And we can just tell people, you know what? In scripture, it promises us that our Messiah is coming back and he's establishing a government that is righteous and that, you know, none of these things would be an issue. And he described all the events that we're seeing right now today as what would happen before his kingdom came. So, yeah, Mr. Grocery Store customer standing in line with me, I'm not really concerned about what's going on today because I know something greater is happening. I want to learn more about this. Well, you know, just so happens we have a Bible study on Thursday nights, you know, and I'd like to invite you. You know, I mean, you don't have to know, you don't have to have this memorized. Right. You know, in order to tell people the good news of the kingdom. Right. And I think, you know, sometimes, and I, I'm going to, I'm just going to say this because I believe it to be true. Some of the most, Mm, how do I want to word it? Some of the most anointed people that I've known that have taught the word of God sometimes feel inadequate when they hear another teacher come along with, oh, you know, have you considered this? Or you and instead of 
drawing us to this new height of glory, we, we somehow take that glory cloud and squeeze all the dirt out of it and, and then put it on us and say, you know, I'm not adequate. They're so much, they know so much more than I do. It's not about what you know. It's about, it's really about, I know the sales cliche, but it's who you know. That's absolutely right. Yeah. And what that does is it levels the playing field for everybody. Yeah. You know, it's like Dr. Deb, you know, when, when we finished the, the Torah cycle for Deuteronomy, what was the command? It was to read the, the Torah to everyone, everyone, children, servants, foreigners, whoever's, whoever's within earshot, the Torah yeah. is to be read to them. Your babies are not going to understand Torah the way that your teenagers are, or the way that young adults are, or the way that older adults are, or the way that seniors are, or the way that scholars are, but they're all hearing it at the exact same time. Why? Because he gives everybody their portion. So if your portion is the size of a thimble, your portion is so valuable and relevant to the rest of us because none of us can interpret or know the um, heart of that that you have been given by God right. from your perspective. We right. need that. We do. We need that. And you might think, well, I just have a thimble. Sis, we need your thimbles. Right. And right. Because that's what makes us, that's what makes unity is when we, when we, um, uh, build up and encourage right. that word that's written on our hearts to come forth from many voices. Yeah. It doesn't matter if somebody knows more than you. It really doesn't. It really doesn't matter. What are you supposed to be doing? You're responsible for that. You're not responsible for anybody else. I care more about a person's heart personally. Yeah. yeah. I feel the love and I feel the, the, yeah. the just the uh, uh, hospitality and the kindness. You know, that's what most of us oh. are hungry for. You know, if you think I back, know, yeah. you know, I get into a little uh, a worldly teaching here a little bit. Uh, like I, I thought back when I was- Do a, I need to monitor you? <laughs> I'm joking. Not that bad worldly. <laughs> I thought back to when I was a child. And you know, um, I don't remember. And we, of course, we all celebrated Christmas and all that kind of stuff. And I can't remember a single toy I got for Christmas, unless I go back in some old family albums and I'll see myself standing there with this dolly and I'll go, oh yeah, I remember that dolly. But I remembered sitting in the car one day with my dad and him just sharing from his heart to me. Wow. And it was that moment of like, oh, yeah, you know, that's what I remember. Yeah. We've made it all about stuff in the Western world. Yeah, we have. We have. And it's not about stuff. It's about relationship. And, and we have to, you know, really get that in our hearts. And, you know, it's like what you said. And, and I love what you said, you know, about being in different uh, places and the thimblefuls, you know, compared to somebody who has half a cup or a quarter cup, whatever. But I remember um, this was a couple of years ago. My granddaughter was five years old. We were sitting out on the patio. And we're looking up and she goes, wow, grandma, that is one big tree, isn't it? And she's looking up, you know, like, oh, that is a really tall tree. And I go, yeah, it's pretty tall. She goes, I wonder if you climbed up it when you got to the top, if you'd be in heaven. And then I, I started to answer and she goes, oh, never mind. She said, before you got to the top, you'd be speaking Spanish. And I'm like, what? <laughs> she goes, she looked at me like I was a total idiot and she goes grandma don't you remember in the bible when they started building that tower up to the heaven and everybody started speaking Spanish <laughs> I'm like oh you lived in California way too long <laughs> but that was to me that was so precious that is precious you know and and I'm sure it's that way with the father he rejoices in your little maybe your thimble full of understanding or knowledge and maybe the simplicity of it can make someone else rejoice i rejoiced in that yeah and she wasn't you know exactly theologically correct <laughs> but she had the heart of it she had the heart of it 
you know? And so yeah. that's how I look at it, how we are too. If we get the heart of it right, then the, you know, everything else is going to come. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, man, we have, we have about five minutes left. Is there anything else that, was there anything else that you wanted to share about this or? I would, um, I've got Colossians one that I put okay. up on screen here. Colossians one, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light. Mm. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. I think that really sums up that we're to be partakers in his inheritance, saints in the light, not because of who we are, what we've done, mm -hmm. but because of what he's done and who he is. And I love that. And it's in Colossians 1.10. Okay, let me write that in for everybody. Colossians 1.10. That's really good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Father, will you just seal these words to our ladies? Would you seal them upon their hearts? Would you speak life and liberty and freedom to each one? Thank you for making each of these women reflections of your glory, lights that are shining in a dark world. Thank you, Father, for stirring their flames. Thank you for bringing Dr. Deb today to fan the flames within our hearts that our lights will shine brighter because of it, Father. The reflection of your glory. Oh, thank you so much. And all about every need that need, every need that is represented by every woman hearing this today. We trust you that you are kind and you are good and you are, you are worthy of our thanksgiving. We come before you, Lord, knowing you're sovereign and you will meet and exceed every need of every person who is represented here, Father, spiritually, physically, emotionally, in every way, Lord, we know that you will meet their needs and beyond so that they can also meet the needs of others. We thank you for that. And we bless your mighty name. Amen. Wow. Thank you so, so, so much. Oh, wow. Let's look and see if there's anything in our chat that we need to address. And then we're going to end. We're, we will end and uh, run over to our after party for a few minutes. <laughs> okay. So um, when we have a uh, woman of ministry, Woman of Merit Ministries, it's actually women, W-O-M-E-N of Merit Ministries.com. And that's where you're going to register. I think I put that in there. So that was just a typo. But thank you very much, Katrina, for putting that in there. I appreciate it. Um, and the dates again, November 12th through 14th. So it starts on a Friday, November. Um, so around three, did you say, Dr. Deb, around three is going to be registration? They can start registering at three. Yeah. Yeah. And hanging out and checking out, and, and we're then, gonna we'll be yeah. running around with little signs saying, "Hello, hello." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just put up that spelling doesn't count after five o'clock. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Father. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, we have had such a good time here tonight. I want to just thank everybody for being here with us. I want to thank all of our listeners that are listening by podcast. We love you. Um, let us know, send us, send us, um, a note, uh, info at the rooted cafe.com K A F E.com info at the rooted cafe.com. Just let us know, um, you know, what, what this meant to you, uh, give us some feedback, uh, love you guys all so much. Um, and Katrina, thank you so much. She's in Australia. Um, thank you so much. Uh, it's 11 AM 
in Australia. Thanks so much for being here. We sure appreciate you. And um, thanks, Dr. Deb, so much. We're going to go to the after party now. So we will uh, stop the recording. Blessings to everyone. Thank you so much.